Hello, my name is Eric Peterson. I'm a neuroradiologist here at Creighton University Medical Center. Uh, we're going to do a brief discussion of uh, early CT findings of ischemic stroke. And uh, in order to start that discussion, we're going to review some vascular anatomy and uh, the vascular territories um, supplied uh, by the vessels. Um, and then we'll uh, lastly get into uh, some CT images that show early signs of stroke. So let's quickly review some vascular anatomy. This is a schematic of the circle of Willis, um, which you've probably all seen before uh, early in your uh, anatomy training. And basically what I want to point out here is that um, the uh, anterior uh, circulation, what we refer to as the anterior circulation, is supplied by the internal carotid arteries, uh, which are here and here, and uh, these uh, bifurcate into the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery, and that accounts for the anterior circulation uh, within the brain. The posterior circulation is supplied by the vertebral arteries, which come together to form the basilar artery, and the basilar artery generally terminates in the bilateral posterior cerebral arteries. It also uh, spits off branches that supply the cerebellum and the brainstem. Uh, that's what we refer to as the posterior circulation. Uh, there are collateral pathways uh, between the anterior and the posterior circulation, and namely those are the posterior communicating arteries. Uh, which extend from the supraplanoid segment of the uh, distal internal carotid arteries to the junction of the P1 and P2 segments of the posterior cerebral arteries. Um, and in this schematic, this patient uh, has these bilaterally and they're relatively symmetric. <clears throat> Although I think you'll see in real life that um, that's actually rarely the case. Uh, and then the right and left sides of the anterior circulation are connected by the anterior communicating artery, uh, which is here. Uh, between the A1 and A2 segments of the anterior cerebral arteries. So that's all I want to point out on that schematic. Let's go to some real life imaging here. This is an MRA of the head uh, performed on a three Tesla magnet. Uh, and this is kind of a top down view um, of the intracranial circulation. And so you can see the internal carotid arteries come up. Here's the A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery. Here's the middle cerebral artery that sweeps back. Uh, along the sylvian fissure. Same thing on the right side. The posterior circulation is here. Here's the vertebral arteries, the basilar artery, and the bilateral posterior cerebral arteries, which extend posteriorly. Um, you can see uh, the posterior communicating artery, uh, at least on the left side, uh, on this particular uh, image, connecting the anterior and the posterior circulation. There's also an arrow on the anterior communicating artery connecting the left and right sides of the anterior circulation. Here's a uh, view from the front uh, that shows the same, uh, same anatomy from the same study. Again, internal carotid artery comes up and bifurcates into the anterior cerebral arteries here and the middle cerebral artery here. Through this, you can see uh, there's vertebral arteries that come together to form the basilar artery, spits off some branches for the cerebellum and tiny perforators for the brainstem, and then uh, terminates in the posterior cerebral arteries, which sweep back to the occipital region. Slightly oblique view of the same anatomy, and a lateral view of the same anatomy. Again, the carotid arteries, the anterior cerebral arteries, which sweep up along the corpus callosum, along the medial portions of the cerebral hemispheres and extend posteriorly. The middle cerebral arteries, which are going back into the screen or coming out straight at us, depending on your perspective, uh, and extend posteriorly uh, to supply the majority of the uh, cerebral hemispheres on both sides. And then the posterior circulation with the basilar artery and the posterior cerebral arteries. Okay, so now that we've reviewed that, uh, we want to look at the vascular territories in the brain. So uh, these are some colored schematics that are overlaid on a T1-weighted MRI uh, axial sequence from the brain. And so uh, we'll kind of start and go from top to bottom. Um, this is a slice through the cerebral hemispheres above the level of the ventricles. And this green territory is the territory supplied by the anterior cerebral arteries. The red is supplied by the middle uh, cerebral artery. And this is the right side. 
And then uh, we'll notice there's area of shading here um, that gets uh, a little bit of supply from both of these vascular territories, both the anterior and the middle. And those are referred to as the watershed zones or the boater zone vascular distributions. Moving inferiorly uh, through the cerebral hemispheres, again, the green is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery, the red supplied by the middle cerebral artery, and then we have some smaller perforating branches that you'll see um, that come in and supply portions of the basal ganglia, like the body of the caudate nucleus here. Moving inferiorly still, uh, the influence of the anterior cerebral artery starts to wane uh, somewhat. Um, the middle cerebral artery here in red. We can see a little bit of the posterior cerebral artery coming in here in blue uh, in the uh, kind of posterior parietal region. Um, there's a bunch of these different vascular territories uh, that are supplied by generally small or perforating branches um, off of the major vascular structures. Those are probably not important for you to know uh, at this point uh, in your uh, medical career. Uh, and then uh, further still inferiorly, now we're at the level of the third ventricle, uh, the anterior cerebral artery is supplying this little bit of the paramedian frontal lobe, again a large area supplied by the middle cerebral artery, and then we come into the posterior cerebral artery which is supplying the occipital lobe, the posterior temporal lobe, uh, and then perforating, uh, perforating branches supplying portions of the uh, thalamus here. Further inferior uh, still, uh, we have the temporal lobe, which is largely supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Um, and again, the posterior cerebral artery supplying the occipital lobe and posterior temporal lobe. Um, and then the anterior choroidal artery, uh, which is a branch off of the supraclinoid internal carotid artery directly, which supplies this medial portion of the temporal lobe. And you can start to see that there's vascular territories supplied by some of the cerebellar branches off the vertebral basilar system. This is part of the territory of the superior cerebellar artery. Uh, inferiorly, we're not going to talk much about the cerebellum, but there are uh, distinct vascular territories within the cerebellum also um, that are uh, delineated uh, above here. And these are generally branches off of the vertebral basilar system. So um, now that we have that background knowledge, let's talk about CT findings in acute uh, MCA territory infarct. So um, there's a couple things we can see. Uh, so we can see the hyperdense uh, MCA sign, uh, which is one of the very earliest signs uh, of acute stroke that we can see on CT. There's obscuration of a lentiform nucleus, right? And remember the lentiform nucleus is the caudate and putamen, uh, the basal ganglia. Um, and then there's loss of the insular ribbon, uh, which is the uh, ribbon of cortex uh, along the uh, insula. And then there's diffuse parenchymal hypodensity and sulcal effacement. So these are all early signs of, uh, of acute stroke on CT. Now remember that in general, CT is a pretty blunt instrument for the diagnosis of acute stroke um, because it takes anywhere from six to eight hours for uh, number two through four uh, to actually show up. Um, and by that time, the patient's generally out of the IV TPA window, uh, still eligible for mechanical thrombolysis potentially. Hyperdense uh, artery can actually show up uh, much earlier than these other signs, uh, and so that's why this one is particularly important to recognize. So let's talk about the hyperdense MCA sign. It's one of the earliest signs of infarction that we can find on CT. <clears throat> we don't have to wait six to eight hours to find it. Um, it's vascular occlusion uh, by an embolus or a thrombus, and we typically see this proximally uh, within the middle cerebral artery, either the M1 or the proximal M2 segments. The hyperdensity within the artery is actually related to increased uh, hemoglobin concentration from an actual clot. Um, and uh, we can see this in the middle cerebral artery. Uh, occasionally, you can see this in the basal artery, although that's a little bit of a differ. Uh, that's a, a little bit of a tougher uh, call. So here's an example. Here's an axial section through a non-contrast head CT, and you'll notice that this M1 segment and some of the proximal M2 segments of this left middle cerebral artery um, are very hyperdense. Uh, here is the contralateral uh, right uh, M1 segment uh, that you can just kind of partially see here. You can see it's much less dense. Uh, 
Um, and the blood here is actually even more dense than the blood pool <coughs> within the uh, dural venous structures that we can see. So this is an abnormally hyperdense MCA, uh, which suggests that there's clot in this vessel. It was one of the very earliest signs of an acute infarct that we can see. Um, so here's uh, that same slice again, and here's a, a slice uh, just adjacent to that where you can see more of the internal carotid artery, distal internal carotid arteries, and here's middle cerebral artery on that right side. You can see it's much less dense, very asymmetrically less dense than this vessel here on the left, which has thrombus in it. Okay, obscured lentiform nucleus. Uh, this is an important sign. It's seen in over 90% of subjects uh, within uh, six hours, uh, shortly after six hours of symptom onset in a middle cerebral artery territory infarct. It closely correlates with a proximal MCA occlusion. Why is that? Well, remember that the basal ganglia are largely supplied <clears throat> by perforating arteries off of the M1 segment, right, which is the proximal most segment of the middle cerebral artery. Um, they have uh, poor collateral supply and they have high... Uh, metabolic demand, uh, and so they're often uh, the first things to go in the setting of, um, of a vascular supply problem uh, in the middle cerebral artery proximally. So what does that look like? Um, we'll take the right side first, that's normal. So you can see the caudate head here, the head of the caudate nucleus and the putamen pretty distinctly. You can see the white matter of the internal capsule the anterior limb, genu, and posterior limb of the internal capsule, the external capsule. So you can see that these structures are all nicely defined. The left side is abnormal, and uh, all of this stuff is kind of the same kind of gray density here. We can't make out the caudate head, we can't make out the putamen, we can't make out uh, the internal capsule. Um, or any of those structures that we can see here. And so this is obscuration of the lentiform nucleus, again, highly suggestive of a proximal uh, occlusion uh, in the uh, middle cerebral artery uh, on the left. It's blocking those perforating branches that supply that. So here's uh, an M uh, MRI sequence. This is a diffusion sequence that shows uh, restricted diffusion in the geographic area involving that MCA vascular distribution. And here's an image from the MRA uh, that shows that that uh, middle cerebral artery on that left side is basically uh, shows no flow related enhancement uh, where the right side looks normal. So loss of the insular ribbon, again, an important early sign uh, of MCA territory infarct. And it's basically the same principle as the obscuration of the lentiform nuclei uh, just involving the cortex. And so what happens is, is we lose gray white matter interface at the lateral margin of the insula. Uh, the lateral margin of the linsa has a poor collateral uh, circulation, uh, and so this is an area where we often get uh, cytotoxic edema uh, in an MCA territory stroke. Uh, this is seen in a very high percentage of early MCA infarcts, again, starting uh, at about six hours. What does that look like? Well, the same thing here. So the, the right side is normal, the left side is abnormal. And here you can appreciate the lentiform nuclei look pretty good. And then here's the insular cortex. And you can see that there's a difference between the cortex and the insula and the subjacent uh, white matter tracts. Now on the left side, which is abnormal, you can actually see that the lentiform nuclei are not particularly well defined. And there's absolutely no differentiation between the gray and white matter along the insula on this left side. So that's an insular ribbon sign, a uh, common early finding of MCA territory infarct. And then here's a diffusion-weighted sequence from an MRI that shows uh, the restricted diffusion, uh, the cytotoxic edema within that MCA territory on the left. So this last one, diffuse parenchymal hypodensity and sulcal effacement. Um, this is generally associated with higher mortality and morbidity uh, with extensive hypodensity seen early on CT scan. Um, and uh, these are patients that often neurosurgery has to become involved uh, to provide uh, decompression uh, to prevent herniation. So <coughs> here's, what that, here's what that looks like. You can see that uh, within this, almost this entire hemisphere on the right, uh, there's very poor differentiation between the gray and white matter structures, right? Whether you're talking about the lentiform nuclei, the basal ganglia, or whether you're talking about the cortex, uh, 
uh, within this distribution as opposed to the left side where you can see some differentiation between the gray matter and white matter density. There's also, you'll notice, sulcal effacement within this right cerebral hemisphere. Here we can see happy sulci, over here not so much. That's a sign that we're getting some mass effect. We've even got some early compression of the lateral ventricle. A little bit later on uh, in the course here, you can see there's now this more well-defined uh, area of low attenuation and loss of gray-white differentiation. Large geographic territory, you'll notice it, it's actually involving the anterior cerebral artery and portions of the middle cerebral artery distribution. There's more mass effect now with increased sulcal effacement, uh, increased ventricular compression, and now we've actually got midline shift from right to left. Uh, here, we've gotten the surgeons involved. They've come in and done a large craniectomy to try to decompress this to relieve some of the mass effect. Um, the midline shift is now a little bit better. You can see that this large geographic area of low attenuation and uh, gray -white, uh, poor gray-white differentiation uh, persists here. And those are the early uh, CT signs uh, of stroke.